Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you for joining me here. This is Gabriel Vision Tune Lamette. I'm really excited that you decided to join me because I have a very special spotlight for this Saturday segment. I'm going to actually be spotlighting a real good friend of mine because she is my oldest friend. We've been friends for over two decades and I actually met her through camp. A lot of people say, man, you're always talking about camp. Get over it. I work at a camp, so I love it. But I got one of the best benefits of being able to go to a camp as a kid. So I want to give a shout out to the Camp Wynola people because the person I'm looking to spotlight is my dear friend, Jessica Bandolin. And so I want her to give an opportunity to kind of share some of her passions because everybody has different passions in life and everybody's story is worth spotlighting. So go ahead and enjoy this video and I'll be back at the very end. Bye bye. Hey Vision Tuners, my name is Jessica and Gabe and I have been friends since we were 14 years old. Um, we've been through a lot and I'm super excited to see the series that he's been doing lately and he asked me to be a part of it so I thought I would submit this video to him. Um, Gabe asked me to speak about uh, the things in my life that I'm passionate about and I do have a couple of things that I wanted to go over with you guys. So the first thing that I am very passionate about is my family. When I was a kid, I um, was convinced that I would not get married until I was about 40 years old, and then it would only be because I was bored, um, that I had done enough things and seen enough things, and that I would you know, just settle down and have a family at that point. Um, but God definitely had a different plan for me. Um, I got married when I had just turned 20 years old. I had two beautiful girls a couple years later, and um, life has been crazy. And the thing that I think that I am most passionate about with my family are the lessons that I get to learn from them. Um, getting to see my kids grow up and see the delight in their faces when they learn something new. Um, being married to a man who is my polar opposite <laughs> in every shape and form and everything like that. Um, it pretty much guarantee that if he says yes, I'll say no. It's just the way we are. Um, but I love that because we learn from each other. Um, and I think the biggest lesson that I've learned from having a family has been that I am not in control of anything except for how I react to things. So um, it has been a lifelong journey for me. It will continue, um, I'm sure, until the day I die. Uh, but the thing that I have come to realize about myself is that the only thing that I get to have say in is how I react to situations. And we have been tossed some pretty big curves in our days and have had some pretty tragic losses. And And I think the best way to handle it is to just decide instead of fighting the merry-go-round that life is that we join the ride instead and enjoy what we get to have on it. So for any of you who know me, you know that I love animals. I have always adored having pets um, since I can remember. We've almost always had dogs around the house. Um, I love playing with them. My absolute favorite um, pet when I was a kid was my first German Shepherd. Her name was Roxanne. And she had these giant saucer ears that stuck up off the top of her head. And I was not allowed to touch them for the first six months that we had her, which is really hard when you're like eight years old. Um, but I kept my hands off of them and they finally stood up on their own and she used to waddle around with her ears flopping all over the place. It was the greatest thing. The thing that I absolutely loved about Roxanne was that she knew what my moods were. Um, sometimes even before I knew that she would sense when I was being sad or um, really happy and she would come up and play accordingly with me. And, and I remember one day um, specifically that I was really, really sad. A friend of mine was moving away and she came up and laid on my lap, which by this point she was, you know, around 70 pounds and I was barely bigger than that. Um, and she laid on my lap and she flipped upside down and she put her feet in the air and she did this bicycle riding action thing with her feet. And, and she looked up at me with her tongue hanging out of her mouth and her little ears flopping. And I just remember cracking up and thinking, oh my gosh, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen a dog do. And she licked my face and trotted off and, you know, it made me feel better despite the fact that I had like, you know, dog slime all over me. Um, it just made me laugh. It made me feel like I wasn't alone, even though my best friend was moving away and, and this day was sad that I knew that she was always going to be there with me. And um, years later, um, I was given the opportunity to have um, another pair of German Shepherd puppies and we picked up these two sweet girls, they were litter mates, and they were about five months old, and I named them Thelma and Louise before I even met them. 
And little did I know that they would be just as trouble, big troublemakers as you know their predecessors' names. But um, these dogs have brought so much joy and happiness into our lives, and so much trouble and shenanigans. <laughs> Um, but I absolutely love them and they're the same like they have picked up on my moods they treat me when I'm feeling sad they give me extra love and attention when my kids were really little around them they were super gentle with my children um, they knew that Hazel was scared of dogs because she was like you know two when we brought these puppies home um, and they were so kind to her so gentle with her never um, scared her you know just being playful and stuff so um, at that point in time, we had this thought of, you know, I would love to share the opportunity to have this specific breed with other people. So we decided that we would uh, let our, our dogs have puppies and see what would happen. And so we had a litter about two years ago and um, loved it. It was so fun and we got to play with these puppies, these little tiny babies, and love on them and teach them things and then send them off to their homes, um, to their forever homes. Um, with these families that just adored them. And and we have some puppies right now as well. We're going through the whole process again. And I think my favorite part about raising German Shepherds is that I get to see through their eyes every day what it's like to discover um, living here and being a, a dog and figuring out what people are and, and how to do things and stuff like that. It's like, it's almost like having kids all the time and then you know they get to go off on their own adventures. But um, what I really love too is that the families that end up with my pets uh, still check in with me. They still send me pictures, they send videos, they uh, get to follow them on Facebook and see um, what their lives are like and to me it's the best of both worlds because I get to help them come into this world and I get to see them go through this world and it's just an amazing feeling to know that these dogs are going forward and spreading their joy and their love with their new families. So the last thing I'd like to discuss with you guys is this uh, most recent journey that I started. Um, a couple of years ago, I met a woman in our church who is a health coach, and she gave a speech at a meeting that I was at, and it just kind of really blew my mind what she had to say and just how our bodies function and how we're supposed to view nutrition and just different things that she taught me that I literally had never heard before. And was so intrigued by it. I ended up contacting her a couple months later and talked to her about things um, and just trying to figure out um, how I want to be for my life. Um, I went through a lot of time where I let my health slide. You know, I didn't eat right. I didn't exercise right. I didn't view myself as a healthy person. And it really, really affected my self-esteem. Um, I've always been a confident person. I've always thought of myself that I'm the prettiest girl in the room whenever I walk in. Um, and that took a beating for a, a good couple of years, you know, it really wore me down to the point where I didn't recognize my spirit every time I saw myself, you know, and, and that was really sad and really hard for me to see. Um, so I made the choice to, to um, talk to this lady and to find out what can I do to change my life, you know, and and honestly, at the time and even to this day, it's not about the number on the scale for me. Like, like having you know my weight go down is amazing, and I love that. But it's more how I feel about myself. When, when I feel confident, I act confident. And my biggest reason why I wanted to get on this journey was because I want my children to grow up with a, a choice and a chance to be able to be healthy. I want them to have the knowledge that they need to make those choices and and to hopefully most of the time choose you know the right path like we all want for our kids and so I started this journey a couple of years ago and um, have lost a good amount of weight you know but for the most part like the biggest biggest thing that I've gotten from it is that I feel like I am back you know I feel happy when I see myself I feel happy when I don't see myself you know I'm walking with confidence I'm speaking with confidence I am loving people with confidence and that is something that I have really missed about myself. Um, so I have recently joined up to be a health coach as well and I absolutely adore being able to talk people through this process that we get to 
help them not only nutritionally, but figure out, you know, why are you doing things the way you were always doing before? Like, what are you using food for instead of just fueling your body? And, and to see these transformations that these people go through, to have those calls where people are like, I get it. Like, I finally get it. These bonds that I have been dragging around for years and years and years, these chains on my neck, like they're gone, you know, that they, they can walk away from them. They're getting clear of them. And in my journey, it's not over by far. Um, I'm still learning every day too. You know, there are days where I completely mess up and completely drop the ball and completely walk away from everything I know. But then I get back up and I do it again and I do it again and I do it again. And somebody had told me one time, it's not the number of times that you fall down, it's the number of times you get back up. And as long as you get back up one more time than you fall down, then you succeed, you know. And and that's where I'm at now. You know, I'm I'm not done with it. I'm not going to be done. Like this is a life lifetime journey for me as well you know that I will continually learn to choose my habits of health and to choose to be better and to choose to be healthier and to choose to teach my kids a better way you know and and I hope that one day that they can look back on it and be grateful for what they have learned so Well, Vision Tuners, that's my time. Thanks for tuning in with me today. I appreciate the opportunity to share some of my passions with you. If you have any questions regarding some nutrition or how you'd like to change your life and your health, then please feel free to contact me. My email address is eloquentrhymes at gmail.com. If you'd like to see my puppies grow up and what shenanigans are getting into lately, find us on Instagram at Shotgun Shepherd Canine or on Facebook at Shotgun Shepherd Canine. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. So I have to first start off by saying, Jesse, you did a really good job, my sister. She's not really into doing videos and stuff like that, but she was going ahead and kind of going with what I was looking to do, and she was willing to take that on, so I think you did a good job. And then in turn, I also wore an awesome Muppets t-shirt. For those that are wondering, why does this big dude have on a Muppets t-shirt? Growing up, we were always into cartoons, and we were definitely into the Muppets. And so uh, even back then, we had nicknames for each other. I was Kermit. It. She was Piggy to this day. I still call her Piglet. She calls me Kermy. Anyway, I'm telling too much of my childhood stories here, but my whole point is it's so valuable to be able to have a friend that I can depend on and be able to talk to. And I wanted to be able to spotlight what is passionate to her. And then also within the passion of things, I have to say hello to the family. So Dan, Sapphira, Hazel, what's up y'all? Uh, Uncle Gabe in the house. But anyway, just wanted to make sure that I got a chance to show you guys some Something else that tells a little bit more about what has helped to be my support system and to be able to have those relationships that are worth valuing. So also at the same time, if you have that interest in getting health support, please make sure you contact her. She's got a lot of stuff that she'll be able to help you with. And then if you are a big time animal lover, if you like dogs, cats, orangutans, whatever it is, go to her page so you can sit there and find out what's going on with her and the shepherds and maybe help build that community as well. I know there's a lot of dog people out there that love to be able to talk, discuss, and view things regarding animals. So in closing, I just want to make sure that I also say make sure you like and subscribe to this video. I greatly appreciate that. And then also leave a comment for me if you would like me to possibly do a spotlight on you because everyone's journey is different. Everyone's story is different. And the more we learn about each other, the more we can understand and love one another. So thank you for joining me for this Saturday segment and I'll be seeing you guys next week. Bye-bye.